In this video, I'll be helping you on your way to find the Warhammer 40,000 army for you. With a huge number of armies and largely differing playstyles, there are a massive amount of options for you to pick from. This can be extremely overwhelming, especially for a brand new player. But not to worry, this video will guide you through them all. Whether you're looking to join the Imperium of Man, the corrupted forces of the Chaos Gods, or command an army of alien Xenos, there will be something for you. Hello and welcome to the Command Phase. My name is Mark and thank you so much for joining me. So you've decided to start the amazing hobby of Warhammer 40k. First of all, I just want to say welcome and I do hope you enjoy your hobby journey. There are many different reasons why people pick an army. Firstly is the range of models and how the army looks. As you'll be spending a large period of time building, painting and playing with these models, this is certainly a high priority. Others pick based on the playstyle of the army. This could be a gunline shooting army with a large variety of cool weapons and tanks unleashing a salvo at your opponent, or the other end of the spectrum with a force that just wants to get stuck in and butcher their way to victory in glorious bloody combat. With these and everything in between, there is a playstyle for everyone. The background stories or lore of the faction is another big reason for choosing a force. There are a huge array of stories which got brought to life in the codexes and through the many incredible books in Games Workshop's own publishing division, the Black Library. Through reading these, players have found an army which resonates with them and have picked up the models as a result. Price is another understandable factor. With some armies requiring a lot more models to field, it can get quite expensive. The size of the army is another contributing reason. You might want a larger force which covers the battlefield to feel like overwhelming odds for your opponent, or potentially prefer a smaller, more elite force for your project to feel less daunting. Of course, some players, just like in computer games, often want to find out what is the most powerful at the time. If that is something you'd like to do, then obviously go for it, but please bear in mind that Games Workshop do update and balance the factions. How good a certain army is right now may well not be in the future, so making sure you like it for other reasons as well is always helpful. There is no wrong reason to pick an army, so don't worry. At the end of the day, it's just a game, with fun and enjoyment being the most important thing. So as long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Please don't let people tell you otherwise. If you have any questions at all, drop them down in the comment section below and I'll be able to help you out. Make sure you watch until the end as I'll be giving you some extra tips on what to do after you've decided which army you like. But now, it's time to find your first army, so without any further ado, let's get stuck in. These are the poster boys of Games Workshop. The Adeptus Astartes, more commonly known as Space Marines, are the Emperor's Angels of Death. These genetically engineered super soldiers were created by the Emperor of Mankind 10,000 years ago with the sole purpose to conquer the galaxy. While it's safe to say it didn't quite go to plan, they are still the elite fighting force for the Imperium, always willing to fight for what they believe in, and they will never give up hope. The Space Marines are organised into chapters, each of which is a self-sufficient fighting force. There are over a thousand chapters, each with its own unique identity and heraldry. The Space Marines are the Imperium's most powerful weapon and they are deployed to fight the galaxy's most dangerous threats. Armed and armoured with the best war gear the Imperium can provide. Space Marines are the most accessible and forgiving army to collect and play. They're solid at all facets of the game without being specialists. With a wide variety of units, straightforward rules and a huge amount of versatility and resilience, it's easy to see why this is often one of the most common starter armies and a firm favourite of many players. 
Plus, with the huge amount of unique chapters, you'll have the opportunity to create an army with the lore and looks you enjoy. The Black Templars are the most zealous of all space marines. To them, the Emperor is a literal deity. They are known for their black armor, iconic crusader crosses, and their brutal close combat skills. So great is their fervor, they chain their weapons to their wrists, ensuring their bolters and blades leave their hands on victory, or not at all. Unlike most chapters, the Black Templars have no fixed homeworld. Instead, they are ship-based, roaming the stars aboard vast crusade fleets. They are a fearsome force driven by their unwavering faith on an eternal crusade to purify the galaxy in the name of the Emperor. On the tabletop, the Black Templars are arguably the most horde army a space marine force could put out. A tide of durable bodies who love and want to be up close and personal with the opponent, swearing an oath at the start of the game to gain a bonus depending on your opponent. While not having access to some of the Space Marine data sheets, they have a lot of really nice bespoke looking units that are a joy to paint and play. No Space Marine chapter exemplifies the image of the Angels of Death more so than the Blood Angels. They are known for their sanguinary nature, fiery red armor, skills in close combat, and their tragic flaw, the Red Thirst. A gene curse dating back more than 10 millennia to the death of their winged Primarch Sanguinius at the hands of the arch traitor Horus. This thirst for blood and violence can sometimes lead to the Black Rage, a form of madness that causes them to lose control of themselves. To witness the Blood Angels in battle is to behold the contrast of the Imperium's majestic glory and the capacity for apocalyptic violence. On the tabletop, the Blood Angels are an elite melee force, albeit with more versatility and shooting than the Black Templars. With fast-moving combat units of the Sanguinary Guard and Death Company to get into the fight quickly and hit really hard. The Blood Angels bespoke units really add to the impressive look and feel of this force. The first legion of the original Space Marine chapters, the Dark Angels, are known for their dark green armor, plasma weapons, deep commitment to millennia old rituals, and their secrecy. Led by the newly awoken Primarch, Lionel Johnson, they are a highly skilled and disciplined force on the battlefield. None fight with more grim determination than the Dark Angels, with their renowned specialist companies, the Deathwing and Ravenwing. They obsessively hunt the Fallen, their own traitorous members turn to chaos during the Horus Heresy, seeking redemption for their past. Their complex history and internal struggles makes them a captivating and popular 40k faction. On the tabletop, the Dark Angels are the most resilient of the chapters, who actually improve when they are battle-shocked. They have access to their bespoke, fast-moving Ravenwing units and slow, resilient Deathwing Terminators. Plus, with their hard-hitting Primark back in model form, who looks absolutely incredible, the Dark Angels have a lot of options to play the game how you want to. The Space Wolves are a savage Space Marine chapter of merciless hunters. They are known for their Viking aesthetic, sheer ferocity and loyalty to the Emperor. They hail from the icy world of Fenris and they are descended from the Primarch Lehman Russ, the Wolf King. The Space Wolves are a wild and untamed chapter who are not afraid to break the rules, often clashing with other chapters over their methods. The Space Wolves are the Emperor's executioners. They will hunt down their enemies and tear them apart no matter the odds, each seeking to forge a saga worthy of immortalization. On the tabletop, the Space Wolves are a melee-focused marine army. While they don't have the speed of the Blood Angels, they make up for this in durability. Based around their amazing characters, each time they complete a heroic deed, your army gets a buff until the end of the game, which can make a huge difference if you manage it. Their Viking heavy and wolf aesthetics is one that looks great on the tabletop, and their unique units give the chapter a huge amount of flavor. 
The Grey Knights are a secret order of space marines, based on Saturn's largest moon, Titan, specifically tasked with hunting demons. Clad in silver armor and wielding psychic powers, they possess unparalleled resistance to the corruption of chaos, able to channel the Emperor's own power to defeat their enemies. Equipped with powerful nemesis weapons, they are a small but elite brotherhood, each warrior chosen for their exceptional purity of spirit. The Grey Knights are not part of the wider Space Marine hierarchy, and they answer only to the High Lords of Terror. Their primary mission is to combat demonic threats, defending humanity against the darkest horrors of the war. On the tabletop, the Grey Knights are a visually striking elite force with knightly heraldry. They utilize teleport strikes to move around the board quickly, getting into range of their mid to close range guns, psychic powers, and very good melee options. Making clever use of this will allow you to keep your deceptively deadly units alive. While they don't have a huge number of kits, most of the models come from three main boxes, although the Combat Patrol really gives you a great starting point into this army. Death Watch is an elite army of space marines gathered from various chapters, each a master in their own right. Chosen for their exceptional skills, they unite as the galaxy's foremost Xenos hunters. From their hidden bases orbiting watch fortresses, the Death Watch dispatch carefully selected operatives to hunt down and exterminate alien presences wherever they may be found. They are an elite force equipped with a variety of specialist ammunition types, unusual weapons, and secret war gear developed who more efficiently cut down their scuttling enemies. They are black armoured hunters, filled with a righteous hatred for the Xenos, and will not rest until the stain of the alien is scoured from the galaxy. On the tabletop, the Death Watch are an extremely flexible and versatile force that can be kitted out to suit any scenario. More so than any of the other Space Marine chapters, being able to choose turn by turn. Their kill teams allow you to mix and match to make your own custom units. They also have the ability to teleport around the board to where you need them most. Their aesthetic on the model is fantastic. The silver shoulder pad and arm alongside all the iconography of the chapters they are a part of really allows you to put your own stamp on the army and make it unique to you. The Adeptus Custodes are an elite and ancient warrior brotherhood in Warhammer 40,000. Directly serving the Emperor of Mankind, they are the Emperor's personal bodyguards and defenders of Terra, the Imperial homeworld. Clad in a gold power armor and wielding master-crafted weaponry, they are unmatched in combat prowess, each custodian being worth an army of regular soldiers. Created using the Emperor's genetic material, they are taller, stronger, and more resilient than ordinary humans. Known as the Ten Thousand, their numbers are limited, and each custodian is a true hero in their own right, a demigod of war. When combined with the peerless anti-psychic protection provided by the Sisters of Silence, there are few in the galaxy who can withstand them. On the tabletop, the Adeptus Custodes are melee monsters, and arguably some of the best fighting units in the game. Having their martial guitars allow you to improve your melee characteristics each fight phase, depending on what you're fighting. While you won't have many models on the board, don't be fooled as they are extremely tough and difficult to remove off the table. They don't have much long range shooting outside of expensive Forge World units, but if your opponent gets into mid to close range with these demigods, they will regret it. A good starter option in terms of the hobby side of the game with a small number of models and fairly simple paint scheme if you wanted to use the box art. Plus, they are the favoured army of everyone's favourite famous Warhammer 40k fan, Henry Cavill. The Astra Militarum, also known as the Imperial Guard, is the largest and most diverse fighting force in the Imperium of Man. Made up of mostly ordinary men and women from all walks of life, the soldiers defend the vast territories of the Emperor against countless threats. 
Led by experienced officers and supported by massive tanks and artillery, the Astra Militarum employs combined arms tactics to face any enemy. They are the backbone of the Imperial Army, and they are often called upon to fight in the most dangerous and difficult battles. Their overwhelming numbers and willingness to make the ultimate sacrifice make them a critical bulwark against the darkness that threatens humanity. On the tabletop, the Astra Militarum typically filled a vast quantity of infantry squads, backed up by artillery and tanks. Needless to say, the vast majority of the Guardsmen won't be expected to live, but there will be a huge amount of satisfying gameplay with officers issuing orders depending on what is needed, and always remember, anything can die if you fire enough guns at it. Modeling wise, there are a fair number of newer models and older sculpts available to you, and if you're a fan of lots of tanks, this may well be the army for you. The Adeptus Sororitas, also known as the Sisters of Battle, are an all-female military order of the Imperium of Man. They are the armed forces of the Ecclesiarchy, the religious organisation that controls the Imperium. They are devoted followers of the Emperor of Mankind, embodying the ideals of faith, zeal and unwavering dedication. Their warriors, clad in power armor, illuminate the faithless in lethal volleys from the holy trinity of bolter, flamer, and melter weapons. They blend martial prowess with deep religious conviction. It is said the emperor's benediction touches each of these warriors, manifesting as a nimbus of holy light in which his power is revealed in miraculous deeds of fortune and divine strength. These devout warriors spread the light of the God Emperor with fury and flame. In this brutal universe, they stand as a shining beacon of unwavering conviction, purging traitors, heretics and Xenos with a fervour that borders on the divine. On the tabletop, the Adeptus Sororitas are a powerful but high skill level force, requiring careful manoeuvring for victory. They utilise miracle dice gained in a variety of ways, allowing you to store up dice rolls to bring out in the game using an act of faith when you need them for a big impact. They are quite a fragile army, excelling at mid to close range combat, utilising their specialist weapons and some good melee options, all whilst being backed up by some iconic tanks. They've had a huge range refresh recently, so have a lot of really good sculpts to get stuck into their incredible aesthetic. Although, being a larger force, they can be quite an expensive army to collect. Originating on Mars and allied with the Imperium of Man, the Adeptus Mechanicus stand as the Omnisire's chosen in Warhammer 40k. Merging flesh with machine, in their eyes they see technology as sacred and seek the hidden knowledge of the past. The Adeptus Mechanicus are a powerful and feared force in the Imperium of Man. They control the vast majority of the Imperium's technology and they are responsible for maintaining the machines that keep the Imperium running. The Adeptus Mechanicus army comprises of cybernetic warriors known as Skitari and colossal war machines such as Titans and Castellan robots. They are led by tech priests who wield both sacred rites and advanced technology, all in the service of the machine god. On the tabletop, the Adeptus Mechanicus are a very strong, focused shooting army, whose aim is to wipe out the enemy from afar and trying their best not to get into combat with their fairly weak bodies. Each turn you're able to decide whether you want to be aggressive or defensive, getting a respective buff for the army, allowing you flexibility depending on what you're up against. Those of you fairly new to the hobby may find their delicate bodies difficult to put together with a lot of details to paint too, although being a fairly new force they do have a lot of great looking kits to get stuck into. 
This formidable army of towering war machines known as the Imperial Knights are each piloted by aristocrats of a noble house sworn to the Imperium. These gigantic mechanical behemoths, covered in chivalric heraldry, dominate the battlefield with devastating firepower and close combat prowess, striking fear into the hearts of their enemies. The knight pilots, who are skilled and noble warriors, form a deep bond with their machines, making the knights an extension of themselves. In times of war, these noble houses fight alongside the Imperial Guard and other forces, defending humanity's realms from the darkest threats that plague the war-torn galaxy. Their presence alone can turn the tide of battle, making the Imperial Knights a symbol of hope and strength in the grim darkness of the 41st millennium. On the tabletop, the Imperial Knights unsurprisingly are an extremely elite force, with only a handful of models in your army. Needless to say, they are fairly beginner friendly with the basic strategy of walk forward and kill everything in sight, alongside not having to worry about too many rules and data sheets of your own. Surprisingly, knights are one of the cheaper armies to collect, needing so few models. Do be warned, building and painting up one of these is a far bigger project than anything else in the game. Chaos Space Marines, the damned remnants of a once loyal Astartes, are warriors who betrayed the Imperium under the insidious influence of Horus, the arch traitor Warmaster. These heretic Astartes fell prey to the lure of the Dark Powers, embracing the malevolent Chaos Gods and abandoning their former oaths. Horus, the Puppet of Chaos, led the initial rebellion during the Horus Heresy, a galaxy-spanning civil war that nearly toppled the Imperium. Although he fell in battle against the Emperor, his treachery left a permanent scar on the galaxy, and the remaining legionaries escaped to rebuild their numbers. Corrupted by the malefic forces, they wear twisted versions of their once noble power armour. Their weaponry, infused with chaos energies, unleashes destruction with horrifying efficiency, some of their comrades and war machines gaining unnatural powers and demonic infusion, all in the service of the Dark Gods. They are the enemies of the Imperium, and they will not be stopped. On the tabletop, Chaos Space Marines are an aggressive force who have the durability of Space Marines but sacrifice a bit of shooting to hit really hard in combat. They have the ability to make a dark pact with the Chaos Gods for power in either shooting or combat, which could backfire afterwards. Plus, if your unit worships a specific god, these powers will change too. They have a lot of really exciting kits in a modelling perspective, from the meat shields that are cultists and the horrifying possessed marines to Abaddon the Despoiler, the new Warmaster. First of the three standalone Chaos Space Marine armies, the Death Guard are the traitorous legion dedicated to the Plague God, Grandfather Nurgle. Cursed with eternal resilience and pestilential powers, they thrive amidst disease and decay. Mortarian, once a loyal Primarch, turned against the Imperium during the Horus Heresy, after making a desperate bargain with Nurgle to cure his legion's terrible plague. This terrible mistake doomed his legion to eternal servitude. Now, they wage a gruesome war to spread Nurgle's plagues, reveling in suffering and pestilence. Their relentless advance, clad in rotting power armour, leaves a trail of death and corruption as they seek to bring their gifts of unending rot and despair to all corners of the galaxy. On the tabletop, the Death Guard are a very slow and durable army who spread a debilitating aura of plague across the battlefield, weakening your opponents and corrupting objectives. If these models get up close to your opponent, they're going to have a bad time. 
These units are backed up by some powerful characters providing plentiful buffs and none more so than their demon Primarch Mortarian, who isn't just an incredible looking model, but a real handful on the battlefield. This army is full of character with interesting modelling and painting opportunities for you to have. The Thousand Sons were the second traitor legion to be made into their own independent army. The once loyal servants of the Emperor, led by Magnus the Red, were corrupted by the Chaos God Zeech during the Horus Heresy. Magnus tried to warn the Emperor of Horus's betrayal, but his attempt to contact the Emperor through the war backfired. The resulting backlash destroyed their home planet of Prospero, and the Thousand Sons were scattered. They are now a twisted and sorcerous legion, and they are driven by a desire to master the war. On the tabletop, the Thousand Sons armies revolve around squads of rubric remains, empty suits of power armor animated by chaos magic, supported by powerful sorcerers, and of course, the demon Primarch Magnus too. They have lots of psychic shooting attacks to devastate the enemy. Plus, with access to Cabal points for the number of sorcerers you have, you get access to even more powerful abilities. If you are a fan of magic, this may well be the army for you. They are a striking set of models on the tabletop, and although not the biggest variety, they do pack a punch. The World Eaters are a savage and brutal Chaos Space Marine Legion, driven by their insatiable thirst for bloodshed and combat. All led by their merciless demon Primarch, Angron. Angron was a gladiator slave forced into brutal combat, inheriting a frenzied rage that now courses throughout his legion. The World Eaters' unbridled aggression and berserk fury in battle are their defining traits, making them formidable foes on the battlefield. They embrace the brutal aspects of Khorne, the Blood God, and become Khorne Berserkers, an unstoppable force of destruction. Khorne has very simple tastes, blood and skulls, and it doesn't matter where they come from. The World Eaters' existence is one of ceaseless butchery, as they revel in their violent nature and seek to spill oceans of blood in Khorne's name. The most recent Chaos Legion to receive its own codex, this is an army that just wants to be in combat, pretty much foregoing any shooting and no psychic to do so. They have the ability to gain blessings of corn each turn from rolling a number of dice which can provide some really good buffs. Plus, with their brand new sculpts of Berserkers, Demonic Ape Bound, and of course the Centerpiece, who can take a punch now in the form of Angron. You'll have great fun not only with the modeling and painting side of the army, but racing into combat to tear your opponents limb from limb. And if you take casualties, that's not a problem as Corn does not care from where the blood flows. Chaos Demons were created by the energies of the warp, and they are constantly being reborn in the fires of conflict. They are a diverse group and they come in all shapes and sizes. They are the embodiments of the four Chaos Gods' dark aspects. Khorne, the Blood God, represents war, violence, and martial prowess. Zeech, the Changer of Ways, embodies sorcery, manipulation, and ambition. Nurgle, the Plague Lord, symbolizes decay, disease, and endurance. And lastly, Slanesh, the Prince of Pleasure, representing excess, indulgence, and desire. Chaos Demons are formidable foes, driven by their master's whims, seeking to conquer the mortal realm, feast on souls, and amplify the Chaos God's power in the never-ending cosmic struggle for dominance. Chaos Demons have a huge diversity of playstyles depending on the god the demons come from, although most rely on close range and combat to get the job done. 
demons utilize the Shadow of Chaos, which expands over the battlefield over the course of the game to affect Battle Shock, which helps both yourself and hinders your opponent. This also allows you to deep strike closer to your opponent with your hard hitting units. With the models ranging from the small Nurgling all the way to a mighty greater demon, you'll have a wide variety of options to suit the god and playstyle you'd like to worship. Chaos Knights are towering war machines tainted by the malefic powers of Chaos. Once noble and loyal to the Imperium, they have now fallen to the service of the Dark Gods. These colossal mechanical behemoths wield corrupted weaponry and are piloted by Chaos worshipping nobles. Infused with the malevolent energies of Chaos, they possess new abilities, rendering them even deadlier on the battlefield. Chaos Knights often fight alongside Chaos Space Marines and Demons, unleashing devastation upon their enemies. In their quest for power and glory, they leave a trail of destruction, spreading the influence of Chaos throughout the war-torn galaxy. Chaos Knights are a lot like their Imperial counterparts, but less restrained and more aggressive. They are harbingers of dread, with the intention of terrifying your opponent and improving your damage against battle shocked units. Models wise, the Chaos Knights have a lot of great options, and you'll potentially want more of a variety of the units than just the larger knights. Like Imperial Knights, these can be a somewhat cheaper army to get into, but with all the iconography and details, this is an undertaking on the hobby side not to underestimate. The Eldari, also known as the Eldar, are an ancient and enigmatic race in the Warhammer 40k universe. Once a mighty empire, their civilization now faces the consequences of their own hubris. Masters of advanced technology, intricate psychic abilities, and unparalleled craftsmanship, they once reigned supreme. Their society is divided into various factions, including the Eldari, Yanari, the Drukari, also known as Dark Eldar, and the Harlequins. The Craftworld Eldari seek refuge aboard massive spacecraft called a Craftworld, fleeing the deadly grip of the Chaos God Slanesh after their decadence led to its awakening. The Eldari's dwindling numbers and fragmented society make them desperate and cautious, but they remain an immensely powerful and influential race in the universe, seeking to reclaim their lost glory while navigating the turbulent cosmos. On the tabletop, the Eldari are a glass cannon force. The majority of your units are really fast and do a lot of damage, but are very fragile. Due to this, they tend to be more of a shooting army. Alongside their variety of smaller specialized units, they have some of the most powerful psychers in the game, giving out a variety of really powerful buffs and can alter the strands of fate dice the army gets each turn. These can then be used for a variety of roles like hit, wound and saving throws. There is the option of making a more durable force, specialising into the wraith constructs if you prefer. They also now house the Harlequins, who are the faster melee Eldar if you wanted to go down the maniacal clown aesthetic. Plus, you can mix and match to your heart's content. Hobby-wise, this is a beautiful army with lots of iconic units and the recently updated Avatar of Kane, which is arguably one of the best looking sculpts in the entire game. Some of the kits are older and even fine cast, but you do have plenty of newer options to choose from. The Drukhari, also known as the Dark Eldar, are a twisted and sadistic faction of the ancient Eldari race. Residing within the dark city of Komora, they revel in extreme pleasures and dark desires, feeding on the suffering of others to sustain their own unnatural lives. Ruled by cunning and malevolent archons, they are the masters of stealth, speed and deception. 
their swift and merciless raids across the galaxy capture countless victims, whom they keep as slaves to prolong their own agonizing existence. The ranks of Drakari are filled with fleet and agile warriors armed with weaponry designed to inflict maximum pain, and through their innate poise, they raise their torturous form of war into a gruesome art form. However, their immortality depends on a constant influx of pain, driving them to eternally seek out fresh victims. This makes them one of the most malevolent and feared factions in the galaxy. Drukhari on the tabletop are a highly mobile force that are more melee orientated compared to their Eldari counterparts. Using their fast gunboats to get into the fight as soon as possible, whether this is using Cabalite warriors to shoot off the firing decks or dropping off witches and incubi to annihilate everything in combat. Throughout the game, Drukhari increase the power of their units using pain tokens gained from killing your enemies. With the three different aesthetics of Cabalite, Witch and Flesh constructs of the Homunculus Covens, you'll have plenty of hobby variety in this army. The Tyranids are an extragalactic, ravenous and incomprehensible menace in Warhammer 40k. A vast swarm of bioengineered organisms, they are driven by a relentless hunger to consume all organic life in the galaxy. Guided by a central intelligence known as the Hive Mind, the Tyranids arrive in colossal hive fleets, consuming entire planets. Their adaptive abilities make them formidable, with each conquest making them stronger. With an insatiable appetite for destruction, they threaten all life in the galaxy, leaving desolation in their wake. They can't be negotiated with or stopped, only slowed in their advance to consume the galaxy until nothing remains. On the tabletop, the Tyranids tend to be a short to mid-range army with both shooting and some great melee. If you want to field a few big giant bugs or a huge horde of deadly smaller creatures, it's completely down to you. The Tyranids are a very adaptable army. At the start of the game, you can see your opponent's army and decide which of their damage increasing buffs you need to utilize. Their main strength and weakness is their reliance on the Hive Mind. This makes your smaller units more likely to pass any Battleshock tests when near their leaders. Separate them away and they'll be much easier to deal with. Coupled with causing the opponent to take an army-wide Battleshock test once per game, which could make for a huge turn in the tide. With the range getting a big refresh at the start of 10th and more amazing models on the way, if you like this army aesthetic, there has never been a better time to get started. The GC LeCult is a clandestine and insidious faction in Warhammer 40k. Led by gene stealers, they infiltrate unsuspecting worlds, implanting their genetic material into victims, creating hybrids loyal to the Tyranid hive mind. These cultists operate in secret, spreading their influence within planetary societies, awaiting the moment to rise in rebellion. Their ultimate goal is to prepare the planet for the arrival of the Tyranid Hive Fleet, which they unwittingly serve. Possessing fanatical devotion and psychic abilities, they manipulate their hosts and initiate uprisings to seize control of entire worlds. The Gene Stealer cult's presence remains hidden until it's too late. On the tabletop, the Gene Stealer Cults are a relentless covert horde. When their units die, they have a good chance they'll return to play, popping up again to become a nuisance for your opponent. The army can be very tricky to work with, being a fairly fragile force, but they get around this by having most of the units off the table in deep strike, allowing you to plan perfect ambushes, catching your enemies in the crossfire and overwhelming their forces. You can also take a small part of your army as Imperial Guard Brood Brothers. These guardsmen have been corrupted by the cult and fight for the hive mind. 
hobby-wise, they've had a pretty new range over the past few years, with new Gene Stealer models soon to come. This is a fairly expensive army, with a large amount of models needed to field them. With the addition of being able to take Imperial Guard units, you have some really fun and interesting kit bashing options to really make the force your own. Orcs are a belligerent and brutish faction in Warhammer 40k. With an instinctive love for violence and war, they are the galaxy's most prolific warriors. Orcs thrive on combat, growing stronger and bigger with each victory. A truly scary force of pure destruction, Orcs are also the primary source of comic relief in the grimdark setting of the 41st millennium. Their society revolves around the belief in the war a collective psychic energy that fuels their power. Led by powerful war bosses, they form massive war armies, eager to fight anything that crosses their path. Orcs revel in creating haphazard weaponry and ramshackle vehicles, believing their crude inventions work simply because they want them to. This strange phenomenon is an expression of the orc's innate psychic abilities, and it's often difficult for other races to understand or replicate. They live for battle, and their apocalyptic migratory invasions lay waste to whole subsectors of the galaxy as they drown their enemies in a green tide of bloodshed, violence, and destruction. It's not too difficult to imagine what the Orcs want to do on the tabletop. They want to get stuck into combat as soon as possible and crump the opponent with the mass green tide. Backed up by some very powerful yet extremely inconsistent shooting, lowly grots to do the jobs the Orcs don't want to, and scrap built vehicles, they are a very popular army in 40k. If you want to roll a bucket full of dice, this is the army for you. Their main rule of the war, picked at the right time, helps make the entire army a little more durable and gets them where they want to be, hitting harder for that one turn. Hobby wise, there are a lot of great looking models and some recently updated kits, including the newer Squig Riding Boys. Plus, with the large variety and conversion potential with this force, you certainly won't get bored very quickly. Just be prepared to paint a lot of boys. The Tau are a young and rapidly expanding faction in the Warhammer 40k universe. Hailing from the Tau Empire, they follow the philosophy of the greater good, which advocates for unity and cooperation among all species. For many races, this comes in the form of pleasant democracy, which pleases the Tau. For those that resist, the Tau are forced to bring to bear their technological might in the form of punishing long-range weaponry, high-tech aeroplanes and tanks, and highly adaptable battle suits. They often rely on their advanced weapons and technology to defeat their enemies from a distance. They are not so well suited to close quarters combat as some of their opponents, but they can still be effective if they are able to use their superior firepower to their advantage. Despite their relatively small size compared to other factions, the Tau's rapid technological advancements, discipline and unifying ideology have made them a rising power in the galaxy. On the tabletop, the Tau utilise their advanced weaponry to be one of the most powerful shooting armies in the game. They are quite a synergistic army where units can spot for others, allowing them to do more damage with their guns. Alongside this, they are supported by a variety of drones, which can do a variety of things from extra shots with their guns to providing you with a shield and taking a shot for you. With a wide variety of battle suits fighting alongside their supporting fire warriors, these guys are your perfect mecha style army. The Necrons are ancient and enigmatic mechanical beings in Warhammer 40k. Once flesh and blood beings, they willingly embraced biotransference, becoming immortal machines. Ruling over a vast interstellar empire, they were betrayed and entrapped in tomb worlds for millions of years. 
now awakening, they seek to reclaim their former dominance. In combat, the Necrons are a relentless force. Led by powerful overlords and undying Necron Phaerons, they wield devastating weaponry and terrifyingly advanced technology. Their Gauls weaponry can disintegrate enemies at the molecular level. Additionally, Necrons possess a unique ability called reanimation. Fallen Necron warriors can phase out of existence before reassembling and returning to the battle, defying death itself. This ability makes them formidable adversaries as they refuse to stay defeated. The Necrons' cold and unfeeling nature, along with their unwavering determination, poses a significant threat to all life in the galaxy. The Necrons' ultimate goal is to bring the entire galaxy under their eternal rule. On the tabletop, the Necrons are a slow and extremely resilient force that do the majority of their damage up close. To be able to get to the enemy, Necrons' main rule allows them to reanimate models when they fall, allowing you to send waves upon waves of models at the opponent, making Necrons one of the most durable armies in the game. Alongside the immortal foot soldiers, you have a fair amount of big guns, and you can take shards of the Catan to give your forces some much needed punch. Hobby wise, the Necrons got a huge refresh at the start of 9th edition with some incredible sculpts and lots of new units. Plus, with a relatively simple paint scheme, you'll have plenty to get your teeth into. The Kin are a clone race of resilient and pragmatic warriors who together form the ancient leagues of Votan. Given wisdom and purpose by their ancient ancestor cores, armed and armoured by the pounding pistons of the forge, they scour the galaxy for the resources to expand their works and overcome any foe that stands between them and a profitable mining prospect. The Leagues of Votan are a formidable foe, and they are equipped with a variety of powerful weapons and technology. They are also known for their use of Archaeotech. This ancient technology is far more advanced than anything that is currently available in the 41st millennium. They are not afraid to use whatever weapons and tactics are necessary to achieve victory. This makes them a formidable foe, and they are always a threat to their enemies. On the tabletop, the Leagues of Votan are a slow-moving, durable shooting army with some very solid vehicles to ferry their troops around while providing some incredible firepower. Eye of the Ancestors is their crown jewel, where they judge the enemy units up to two times for killing yours, granting you extra bonuses to hit and wound against them. They have some decent combat units, but the main strength of the army is with their advanced firepower. While not having a huge amount of kits at the time of recording, having only recently come out, I can imagine they'll get a further wave coming during 10th edition to expand on this army. Plus, with being fairly elite, they are reasonably priced to get an army on the tabletop. Hopefully this has helped you to understand all of the different races available to you for your first Warhammer 40k army. In terms of your next steps on making this selection, there are a few things I would do. First of all, I'd take a further look into the lore of the Chosen Force. There are a lot of great books in the Black Library or websites online to read up about your Chosen Faction's lore. This will help you to see if you connect with this force. Secondly, you can find all of your rules for free on the Games Workshop website, so you can take a look through the units, detachment rules and stratagems available to them. This will help you see if you like the look of the models and the gameplay options of the faction. And if you want to take this a step further, there are plenty of great Warhammer 40k battle report channels on YouTube, with the likes of Tabletop Titans, Vanguard Tactics and Tabletop Tactics. These are just a few of some of the great channels out there for you to take a look at and see how your army performs on the tabletop. Lastly, I'd look at picking up a single box of models from the army. Potentially a battle line troop style unit, such as Space Marine Intercessors as an example, if you have chosen Space Marines. This will help you to decide if this is the faction you would enjoy building and painting up, without putting a big financial outlay down into a faction at the start. 
Let me know in the comment section which army you are thinking about starting and why. I'd love to know what your choices were. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, please hit that like button. It really helps me to know if you'd like to see more of this content. Thank you so much for watching the command phase and I'll see you in the next video.